Do small dinner parties really work? And if so, what's it take to pull one off? Watch this video to find out how. Those of you who know me well know that I'm a big fan of large dinner or vision events. Those are a proven success, but I'm asked often about doing small dinner parties. They can be an effective income strategy if done correctly. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and this channel is designed to help leaders of nonprofit organizations increase income and become fully funded. I've learned a lot of lessons in 36 years of development and fundraising, and I want to share those lessons with you to see your income soar. In order to conduct a successful small dinner party, you're going to need to do the following four steps. Step number one, pre-planning. Before starting, you need to set some SMART goals for yourself. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. First, attendance. I've found it best to get anywhere between 9 and 20 giving units to attend your dinner. To qualify as a small event, you're going to want to ask more than 20 giving units to attend. Second, location. You want to have this in a restaurant or a hotel. Some have asked over the years if using a home is good, but most homes are not large enough for this many units. But more importantly, sometimes a home is too intimate for people who are considering making a sizable gift. A venue an outside venue is more professional and people take giving opportunities more seriously. Make sure that you have a dinner and not a dessert. Desserts have become very popular, but don't raise as much money as a dinner. By providing a dinner, it makes for a much more upscale event and people feel more comfortable to give a large gift. And dinners work much better than lunches because both the husband and wife can attend, leading to more aligned giving. Third, financial. Always set your total goal based on the total amount of your project or fund that you want to raise. And doing that means that everyone in attendance must play a role in accomplishing the goal. Some in attendance may do the math and see how much they need to give by dividing the number in the audience by the goal. So be prepared for that to be a challenging amount for someone. Not too easy, but also not too difficult to give. Don't make the mistake of asking everyone to give the same amount. Sometimes this over-challenges some donors, but more often than not, it under-challenges most. Let them do the math, but, but perhaps they can give more, even much more. Step number two, planning and marketing. The venue. Choose a venue with moderately priced dinners. Don't go to the most expensive place in town, but also don't skimp. Choose a central location that's easy for attendees to find. Get a private room away from the noise of the restaurant or hotel. Ensure the venue is able to serve your group in 45 minutes or less. Consider having salad and desserts preset if necessary and no buffets. Ensure the room is not large, so large that it swallows you up, but also not so small that you feel crowded. Attendees should sit in a U shape with the organizational leader at the bottom of the U. Some hotels have boardrooms with a large table that seats 15 to 20 people. This works very well. Number two, the invitation, phone call, or meeting with people. Have three to five board members or current donors invite their friends to this event. Ask them to invite nine to 15 close friends. Remember, you have to ask three people to get one to attend. Create a script. Make sure you have something that you can give to them that they feel confident in reading through. When inviting individuals, share the following. Share the problem that exists that the organization is here to solve. What's the solution? Hopefully it's your project or program. The amount of money that we're trying to accomplish and how they can help. Ask them to attend for sure. The next step, the reminder process. Be sure to remind every two weeks leading up to and once a week over the last 14 days leading up to the event. Step number three, implementation, the event itself. Date and time. The date and time of your event is very important to the success of the event. Day of the week, a Friday and a Saturday is best to ensure that both the husband and wife can attend. Time of the day, well for a Friday night, 7 p.m. start is best for most locations in the United States. For Saturday, 6 p.m. start is best. Next, the program. 20 minutes before the event starts, there should be some socializing and some hors d'oeuvres if possible. Take 40 minutes for dinner and then introduction and introduce and thank people for coming. Show a video 
and 10 to 15 minutes to restate the problem, present the solution, and your project. Take 10 minutes for testimonies, two five-minute testimonies, a changed life, and a donor testimony, and give yourself five to 10 minutes to wrap things up and bring it all together and head towards the close. Now, the all-important ask. Briefly review the problem or the need and the solution and the evidence, which is the changed lives. Tell them that they are needed to make the solution a reality. Indicate that it is not necessary for them to make their decision tonight. Encourage them to pray and reflect on it if you are a faith-based organization. Let them know that the person who invited them will call them in one or two days for the decision. Of course, if they want to give that night, give them the ability to do so. Encourage them to pray and reflect on it if you are a faith-based organization. Let them know that the person who invited them will call them in one or two days for the decision. Of course, if they want to give that night, give them the ability to do so. Tell them that they're being asked to consider at a minimum gift of at least $1,200. That can be done tonight or in the near future with a single gift. That can be $100 spread out over 12 months. To get that $1,200 could be a single gift. And of course, let them know that they can give more, even much more, because the need is great. Thank them for coming and dismiss them for the evening. Step number four post-event, the follow-up phase. The phone call follow-up is so vital with individuals, thanking them for coming and making sure that someone is reaching out to them within the next few days. I recommend two to four days. Ask three questions. What have you decided concerning giving to this organization or the project? Do you know how you intend to give? Will that be monthly, single gift, quarterly? Do you know when you can make the gift? How soon will that be? Will that be immediately, within the next 90 days, before year end? The inviter passes along the information to the organization once there is a result. Then the organization should check back to see if the guests were contacted to see if a replacement needs to be found. Mail a follow-up letter to someone. The letter should be sent from the organization to every attendee, thanking them for attending and if they've made a commitment or given a gift, make sure that they have an opportunity to give that way or online. Those making commitments should be given a way to give. That could be online, could be a credit card online, could be an envelope. Reporting back to individuals who made a gift or made commitment is so important. Watch my video on reporting back to find out what are the best things to do during that process. It's recommended that you send a report on a quarterly basis or at significant milestones. Send a report to all those making commitments on the progress being made by the project that they funded. A small dinner can be an effective way to reach a good number of people in a short period of time and in an intimate and personal setting. Follow the instructions above and your small dinner will become a winner. The objective of this channel is to help you greatly increase income for your nonprofit organization. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and be sure to click the bell so that you can be notified immediately of the release of our next video. And also post a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there are topics you'd like me to address in future videos. For videos similar to this, check out the video and playlist listed above and watch other videos related to nonprofit fundraising and go to Development Effectiveness Strategies channel. If you have fundraising questions, then our Saturday Jim and Java program is for you. Submit your questions beforehand on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.